all right so welcome to today's discussion on calorie counting and strategies to eating out we will be joined by Kanwaldeep Singh Ojla from Erudite Nutrition so we are just waiting up on him and while we are waiting up let us just briefly talk about what are the strategies that you need to adopt when you are going to eat out so let me see if Kanwaldeep has managed to join or not I am unable to see it So briefly let us talk about what are the best strategies that one can adopt while uh, eating outside especially when you are going in a large group of friends office parties uh, or wedding season and uh, typically the salt fat carbohydrate and uh, processed food intake during this period goes up so how should we strategize okay I am still waiting on Kambaldeep to join us we are just waiting on Kambaldeep All right, so Kanwaldeep is and we will be starting the session. He's just coming online now. All right, there you are. Finally found it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Very good morning to you. How are you, How are you doing? Fine, fine. I, I was I was trying to search you from last five minutes, but uh, I was searching on your. I mind. think I think FB, especially if you do the chat from your profile, it's a little bit easier to locate than from pages, hmm. because now Facebook has sort of restricted the pages. They want to come up with a separate marketplace where people advertise their business pages, as opposed to uh, let's say your personal page. So the algorithm is being changed in a way that you are able to uh, view only your friends feeds yeah i was having some tripod difficulties earlier too <laughs> yeah mine was ad adjusted to the the horizontal actually axis okay yeah so now we are set so now we are good to go so as yeah. i was telling our audience that today we will be uh, talking briefly about strategies of eating outside for like 15 minutes max uh, where we'll be covering what uh, people can do when they are going outside and they want to watch their health as well Hmm. So, especially in large office gatherings, uh, office parties, birthday parties, relatives uh, going out all in a group, or let's say the weddings. Hmm. So, w w what are the best strategies to eat out? And then we will move on to uh, analyzing whether calorie counting makes sense in today's world or not. Yep. So, see, my take on uh, about about gatherings is first of all you yeah. have to 
understand that uh, about 95% of your choices are not healthy first of all no okay so even if about about 25 of uh, 25% of them they might look healthy but in actual they aren't yeah so so until unless you know the proper meaning of a healthy diet what it is on for example uh people who are too health conscious i have seen them eating a lot of salad okay hmm. but they are not eating any good fats with the salad yes there is there is this one uh, uh like uh, you are talking is, about eating salads outside when they go outside to eat yeah yeah like if anything healthy like anything healthy for example salads for example like if we do not have proper knowledge of what is healthy uh then we might not be able to you know uh, get the benefit from the 5% of choices that we also have. exactly so acha so I, basically I was... when you are eating outside the idea is uh, less about eating as healthy as possible than to reduce the damage huh. like everything has like layers yep. so let's say rice will always be better than refined flour or refined sugar right. so it is like choosing coming up it may not be a healthy food rice and potato need not be healthy foods but it's about choosing a strategy which minimizes your damage to the health yeah. or uh, minimizes your um, or maximizes the progress that you have made in the weight loss journey yeah like sticking sticking to a neutral ground we can so yeah even sticking yeah. to a neutral ground yeah so even if like we are having a good schedule at our home so even now if we are dining out for a while so let's do something that is less damaging all right so yeah. uh, the, the the worst thing that i see here in in uh, in punjab is when we go outside majority of the main course dishes that are full of uh, they, they they consist of gravy yeah yeah the thicker they are the worse they are yes okay because the the amount of unhealthy fats the amount of uh, spices and the oils that they use over there uh, so like i try to so because i i believe like let's take a preparation like dal makhni yeah once upon a time dal makhni which i won't say is restricted to punjab anymore it is found yeah. in menus all over the country once upon a time the process of making dal makhni involved cooking the dal overnight which gave it a creamy texture mm. now you add a lot of cream and now that the prices of cream have gone uh, gone up people have mm. started adding margarine as well yeah and this is uh, something i'm not just saying uh, from a nutritional perspective but also from having some experience in the food industry mm. so that is some of the practices that are going on so the dal makhni that you see has very little makhan or butter in it right it has cream trans fats lot of unhealthy fats and uh, very little good fats uh, in fact cream is not a bad fat at all um, so at least you'll get some benefits out of it but you don't have any benefits to margarine and it's rather damaging towards the health and i believe there has been uh, sufficient restrictions on vanaspati or the hydrogenated fat like let's say from 15 20 years ago but still the restrictions are not sufficient especially in mass cooking in a hotel you are still better off but in a mass cooking like a wedding you are not at all well off yeah there is there is basically no one to check uh, to be honest the only thing that they have to serve you with is quantity and and somewhat of taste yeah okay so like even suppose we are going to a mass wedding and suppose the dal does not taste as good good people will complain but nobody will go and ask for the manager or something like that yes so, so like building up a taste or something like that but uh, the more amount of money the contractor will save per party that uh, that that will all go in his pocket so uh, basically there are two type of system like either you can Uh, get the get the raw material for them or they will get for themselves in any way in either way they will try to put as much as money in their pocket and give you as low quantity or low quality of food i should say as possible yep. so that is a that is a big issue now now the uh, artificial products like uh, 
just about i guess 10 days ago i i read a news uh, from it was from ludhiana uh, there was a female police constable she was about 25 or 26 years old only and uh, she died because she had uh, eaten an artificial paneer wow so the like the level of adulteration is uh, it's so hard to even you know think that you can eat majority of the time now i uh, sometimes Because i guess most of... people especially uh, homemakers or people who who are just going between home and uh, office do not realize that the cost of paneer in this country is more than the cost of chicken it yep. is cheaper to get chicken than for paneer right. and uh, this is somebody uh, who has uh, who has a fair idea of the wholesale rates Uh, it it's coming from that background and in a banquet setting whether you are uh, giving to a local contractor or caterer or whether you are giving to itc and taj the food cost is not more than 15 to 16 percent because they try to maximize on the profits yeah. from the food cost right which is not true in a restaurant setting where the food cost typically runs between 25 to 30 percent so the quality that you will get uh, at a restaurant is always going to be a little bit better than mass cooking right. so now let us uh, tell our viewers how can we reduce the damage to the health in such a scenario right so my personal strategy for that is to like obviously i i do also do hang out with my friends we also go out dine out once in a while or sometimes we get some marriage functions or something like that any any gathering type my strategy for that is to prepare myself is that before leaving the house have you know as many vegetables as i can either salads or vegetables i might also include a little bit of fruit sometimes okay so basically what i'm trying to do is that even though after eating a big plate of salad i will be again i will be hungry in maybe one hour mm -hmm. that will be the time when i reach uh, when i will reach the restaurant when we will be you know starting to get served and the starters will come and all that but my strategy here is to to reduce the consumption of starters that is mostly fried mm. or you know something like that yes. i usually have a big plate of salad before i leave my house yeah so that is what works for me actually yeah i uh, the strategy i have adopted is i usually don't go for salad but rather two eggs uh, mm. fried in butter or ghee so that keeps me satiated a little bit longer in fact uh, two eggs and butter is quite yeah. heavy yeah. but uh, still it will it will enable me to pick and choose dishes like let's say i can go for the kebabs i can go for the salads i can go for uh, things like papad uh i can go for a few vegetables which are not so greasy in nature uh at the same time because i have eaten something i will not be ravenously hungry going after uh the uh, starters or yeah, right. indiscriminately going exactly. after the food so yeah you will you will have you will have a little bit space you will eat the starters you will have some but you will not hog on it Okay, so we have a query here from Chetan Raghuvanshi who says, "What about maida-based bread?" Now, in the scenario outside, most about seventy uh, to eighty percent of your bread is going to be white bread. But let me tell you why brown bread is also not healthy. Because firstly, most of the brown bread is coloring, and secondly, if you notice that brown bread always says brown bread, not whole wheat bread. so in brown bread legally you can add a lot of maida and a very little amount of uh, whole wheat plus some caramel coloring to declare it as brown bread so unless the place promises 100% whole wheat bread all breads are not good for you uh, what would be your take on this uh, yeah mr jitan uh, this is an excellent point basically so like in the starting of the video as pratik said that uh, going for rice even though white rice are less damaging okay but going for rice is a better choice than going for bread yep the, the you are better of, off with rice the rice yep. comes not only over bread kulcha naan paratha all noodles and noodles and all that chinese also 
so, yeah. so plus, rice plus, will uh, cause the least damage yeah and also like uh, even see, sometimes uh, you try to go for a healthy option for like in a in a wedding or in some place you try to get uh, you know a bowl of soup okay Mm. the soup is so thick that it is clearly visible that they must have added you know arrowroot or corn starch into it so yeah. like you you trying to get something healthy okay as uh, you know before your uh, dinner you're trying to have some soup or something like that but what is actually doing is they are just stuffing you up with things like maida and uh, arrowroot and all these things so uh, it makes you know very hard for uh, you to make good choices when you're out i i also yeah, i also because... sometimes i also sometimes get requests like um, uh, they want they are struggling with their weight and they want to lose weight but the one condition that they have is that uh, they are from another city they are living in jalandhar they are uh, you know in a job and they don't have time to cook and the only advice i have for them is sorry uh, sorry guys i can't help you in this situation So, if, so, but there is no way out other than that. Even yeah. uh, so if you are like, if you are saying done. that there is no possibility of you to cook even one meal, okay. So that how am I supposed to help you guys with that? You cannot lose weight on restaurant food. You cannot lose weight on uh, these diets and all that stuff. These things like that. So regarding that, the only thing I would say, I don't know what is the situation in Punjab, but Western India, especially Mumbai, uh, Nasik and Pune, all these places have this dabba system yep. where they make the food at home and deliver it to you. That is a better option than cooking at your own. Uh, not better than cooking at your own home, rather the next best option after cooking at your home. Yeah. Home. So this uh, a dub. Uh, getting a dabba delivered to your office is always more healthier than mm. going for uh, any food of zomato swiggy or going for a restaurant right. or going for any mass cooked food so that would be in my opinion the next best option but you have to see what are the options you get in local yeah. places if in, in your here, local city you don't get such an option you have to cook at home right so now here in uh, jalandhar it is like they have a you know many people are doing this work uh, of different services they provide different you at home yep. same like dabba wala system uh, but uh, like let's say we uh, half of them are basically ladies you know who work at uh, their own home who prepare all the food and then they pack and either their husband or some other person they you know uh, ask for help to deliver the dabba so that will be the closest thing of uh, for you to you know eat a homemade meal but yeah. half of the half of the people that are into this different system are either dhaba owners or hotel on restaurant owner okay so they have also started their own different service because the you know the market is good okay they you know, they save good, some yeah. they save some bucks from that so when your cater when your different service is coming from a homemade it will simply just look at the dal and you will easily notice either it is home cooked or it is dhaba cooked exactly from the taste and from the look that is very you know uh, easy to recognize so if the tiffin service uh, from wherever you are getting your uh, daily meals if that is coming from a home kitchen so that is the best thing that you can do but again if we come into that home kitchen uh, the amount of the the number of rotis and the amount of rice that uh, that will be served in per serving so that is obviously great Now, if you are cooking for yourself, you can eat more amount of pulses. You can eat uh, a big, bigger meal in terms of vegetables. You can have a bigger mm. portion of vegetables. Mm. So, but uh, like the vegetables are expensive, dal is expensive. But what is not expensive? It is the staple food that is rice and uh, potatoes exactly. and uh, wheat. So, yes, it will make a difference if you have a good uh, tiffin service. So, it will be the next best thing that you can do. apart from cooking yourself now coming to the cost where since you mentioned that staple foods like uh, rice uh, roti these things are cheaper it's all about consumption if you are consuming more food uh, the approach i think both of us uh, do agree on is to minimize your food consumption and increase your uh, satiety levels like yep. so that you feel full and you are not tempted to eat more and more that is the approach both of us uh, pretty much take in our nutritional yeah. practice 
So, uh, with regards to that, let us move on to the discussion whether calorie counting is necessary. Uh, what uh, do people mean by when they say a calorie is a calorie? And should we treat all calories as the same or not? So the thing is, even now, you will see that this uh, low calorie fad has not gone despite yeah. the rising rates of obesity and diabetes all over the world. Like metabolic, uh, recently um, Lancet had come up with a study, I think in March or April, where they said that poor diet is the number one killer among humans, even more than smoking. So if poor diet is the number one killer, that means the low calorie diets haven't worked, which has been advised right. since the 70s and uh, 80s. Right. Right. See, uh, calorie is is a, is an energy unit. It is a currency. It is the currency your body requires to run. Okay. It is not something too mystical that we cannot, you know, understand. Now, coming to the question that should we count or should not be count? See, the thing is, you just need a little bit of basic information about food groups and their calories. I think that, exactly. yeah, that should be in your mind. But you do not have to be precise that you, when you're going to soak your dal, it should be exactly 30 grams. When you cut your tomato, it should be exactly 65 grams. So rather than, you know, doing things like that, going, trying to jot out the precise numbers, you will never be able to get a precise number, first of all. Hmm. This is not how the real world works. See, on textbook, on textbook, you can say that this particular food in this particular amount will be of 100 calories. But in reality, there are so many factors which, you know, they change the, the whole scenario. The equation does not add up. So I suggest that they sh there should be a little bit basic knowledge of how much a food group has, uh, how much calories does a food group have. But you don't have to be so much uh, like a, a calorie police, I should say. Yeah. You don't have to be a that Not kind of Not just that. Uh, the, another thing that uh, most uh, researchers in the past hadn't focused on, especially the uh, nutritionists and uh, gym trainers, and that even now they are not focusing on that, and that is to ensure that you do not feel hungry. Few people are focusing on that, but many people are not focusing on right. that. So satiety has been at the bottom of every discussion. And even obesity conferences now, where medical conferences, they are not discussing this topic, despite the fact that uh, the researchers themselves have said that our body on its own can tell us when do you not need to eat. You should not eat when you don't uh, need to eat. Yeah. And for that, you need to eat the right foods. And in that case, all calories are not going to be the same. 50 right. calories of sugar and 50 calories of almonds are not going to be the same. Because almond has a different effect on your body. Sugar has a different right. effect on your body. Right. So right. this is the very basic premise right. which went out of the window in most discussions. Right. So uh, people were told that now nah, you can eat pizza whenever you want pizza as long as uh, you stay within your calorie limit. No, you cannot eat pizza if you're trying to lose weight. It just won't happen. Once you have come to a stable weight, that's a completely different ball game. The strategy is completely different. Yeah. But when you're trying to lose weight, no. What will happen is your body is going to fight and it's going to get back to that weight. Because that's how yeah. we are designed. Because our body doesn't know that we are doing computer job or we are going to a hospital. Right. Our body is designed to store fat so that we don't become extinct. Right. It's a survival technique. So, like when we are talking about calories, we can understand that it is a currency. Okay. It's just a simple example. Now, people who, you know, do not agree on that. They, the people who say that every type of calorie is same, you know, there are no good calories and bad calories or calories are created equally. So, when it comes to the currency or the fuels, all right, there will be a difference in jet fuel and your motorcycle fuel. Of course. Okay. There will be difference. There is a difference between pound. There will be a difference between dollar and there will be a difference between rupees. Yes. Okay. So like, it's like they, they again, it's a little bit hysterical, but like having 50,000 pounds is not equal to having 50,000 rupees. 
<laughs> of course. Okay. So similarly, when you are when you are having calories, when suppose you are having a four hundred calorie meal, okay, it will be some amount of uh, vegetables, a little bit of uh, there can be some nuts or other fats or something like that. Suppose it is a good, healthy, balanced meal of a four hundred calorie. A small packet of Oreo biscuits, that ten rupees MRP biscuit, that is also four hundred calorie. Yep. So the thing is. that 400 calorie a meal that is 400 calorie you are having suppose example you are having four meals so that is 1600 calories you are having every day can you survive for a longer term on four packets of oreos a day <laughs> people who say that every calorie is equal okay so uh, like like they will say okay then uh, there might not be proper vitamins and minerals all right you go ahead with the supplementation you take two or three or five capsules or tablets of doses of multivitamins and supplements that will complete your rda that will complete your rda but for how long can you survive on just eating four packets of oreo that is also 1600 calories this is not the same thing so they have adapted the uh, those who had come up with this kind of strategy that kind of people have adapted it to the next level what they are now saying is there are nutritious foods and non nutritious foods now that always existed there were nutritious foods and non nutritious foods so um, why would you not classify some foods as okay these foods are uh, we should be in your uh, don't eat list or if you eat you need to uh, ensure some amount of uh, like natural detoxification like fasting or something to get rid of the negative effects of the food and get your body back in balance so uh, my problem with this entire discussion is the focus on getting people uh, to eat healthy and stay satiated has not taken place see satiety when uh, when we talk about satiety your body has to be in a positive health Now from positive yep. health i mean that uh, your inflammation should be low there should not be any you know lingering chronic or you know acute diseases in your body okay or even if they are they have to be at a minimum level okay overall your body scale should be in more positive in terms of health i'm not talking about yeah. weight i'm not talking about either you are vegetarian or non veg not nothing no, i'm not talking well, about weight weight anyway is a symptom of poor health it yeah. is not a and then yeah. it comes it's a symptom it is not at a, it's not at a priority of it comes on later yeah. okay so when you are healthy okay when you are in a positive health when you are in a good health only then your body will start behaving properly we are talking yeah. about satiety over here if you are not well enough uh you will not feel satiety obviously even if you are going to if you are sick and you are eating even healthy food at that time there will be some metabolic changes in your body your body will not adapt you have to make a routine on that that routine can take about from 2 week to 2 month or maybe 6 month also mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so you have to properly you know monitor your intake monitor your intervals what you are eating when you are eating in what combination you are eating after a couple of weeks or a couple of months then there will be a stage of your body where you will actually be satisfied from even a plate of salad yeah yeah the the problem which i face here with most of my clients and with most of my patients is when i ask them that after post meal your sugar shoots up to 200 uh, sorry 400 people who have you know uh, who have long term diabetes who have you know insulin sensitivity is you know they have uh, this chronic inflammation in body after a small meal their inflam their blood sugar level will rise up to 400 now i ask them to cut out on chapati hmm. but the problem is a person is sick he is already too much of stressed out because of his health condition he will never feel satiety with a bowl full of vegetables no he cannot he 
ठीक है ना so so when, when you're sick when you're sick your basal metabolic rate is going to adapt yeah. now for those of you who don't know what a basal metabolic rate is we don't want to get into too much technicality it is basically the amount of energy that your body is burning when you are at a state of rest that's it that's all you need to know for now so when uh, you are sick your body is going to automatically burn more energy because the body's priority is to fight the disease or fight the uh, cause of your poor health let's say if you have an injury the body is trying to recuperate from the injury if you have fever the body is trying to recuperate from the fever so the energy consumption there is more so at that point of time you will not be eating the same way when you are in good health right so this is the part about disease now let us look at individuals who are at a normal health and whether for them this calorie balance or calories in calories out makes any sense or not yeah so the in a normal person who's going to either gym or doing some exercise at home who wishes to lose weight or maybe maintain the weight that he has lost so what they they, they try to their gym instructor they try to you know explain them in a very very like say layman terms or you know uh, unprofessional way they will just tell them that this is your body okay the day you eat 1300 calories you will be able to maintain your weight the day you will eat 1500 calories you will put on a little weight and the day you eat 1100 calories you will lose a little something of weight yeah so basically this is what the trend over here is they they set you at a specific number and then yeah, and that would work that would make sense uh, uh, had the small problem of calories out being dependent on calories in yeah uh, right not been true but unfortunately right. calories out depends on calories in right so your body will adjust its rates if you are eating less calories so body picks that up the body because if if otherwise just think about it if your calories out is constant and you simply reduce your calories in humans would have been extinct a long long, long time ago. long time ago long time right so, so there was this gentleman from hunter university in new york he was an anthropologist he did a very interesting study in which he calculated the energy expenditure of sedentary office going americans and europeans and he compared that with the hunter gatherer tribe in africa uh, in tanzania called the hazda tribe and he was shocked to find that the uh, daily energy expenditure of both of them are almost the same and the hunter gatherer tribe has only little bit like very insignificant uh, extra energy expenditure and that completely shocked him because we were told that sedentary lifestyle means you will be uh putting on weight of course so there are sure. other factors uh, like your blood triglycerides blood sugar right. we will leave that apart but just from purely energy perspective we must uh, this, this study was really damning because it busts the myth that the human body when you are working out or uh, something like that there will be other places where the body looks to preserve energy right so this is see, this is how how human body works uh, you are right about it see if you are consuming uh, some amount of food in any form even even it is healthy or even it is unhealthy or junk food the body will gather whatever it receives it will sort it yeah. out it will sort it out and then it will utilize it on the basis of priority function Yeah. if the priority function of the body is to preserve muscle it will preserve muscle but because you have not had a balanced diet for a long time or you are not having a proper routine the muscle preservation will be there but the other other uh, users utilizations and functions of amino acids will start on skipping hmm the body will try to accommodate for whatever like it it the same is the situation with us also now uh the day we get our salary okay we drink we 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 think about having a cup of coffee at starbucks yeah and 
in the last days when our, our accounts is depleted when it's the end of the month we even start and we, we even stand at the tea stall <laughs> we even even stand at the tea stall on the road not tea stall also the 2 rupee brew sachet you get people to buy that <laughs> The right. stall might be too expensive. It might be twelve rupees, no? Yeah, yeah. So exactly. Now, what happened is that uh, on the day when you received your salary, you had a lot of resources on your hand. So yeah. you did what your heart pleased. You did what kept you happy. You tried to, you know, uh, live a leisure life. But when you have, mm -hmm. when you are left with little amount of money, you only put money into your most Uh, prioritizing events only okay so even sometimes what happens is sometimes why we might even skip on our medicines all sometimes we don't have enough money so we we just okay a five day gap in the medicine will not hurt me that much let me wait for the next installment so exactly same is our body now uh, when i started my hospital practice there was uh, there was a patient okay he was suffering from gp syndrome it is actually a neurological oh. disorder and yeah. uh, very interesting one actually so it uh, the patient was on bed since last 5 months his blood work came and his albumin levels total serum albumin levels were low now when your serum mm -hmm. albumin levels is low that means your body is malnourished in terms of protein okay so the patient was on liquid feed ng feed okay 10 feed a day at average the calories in that feed was about 200 to 220 30 calories and with one egg white per feed that patient was having 10 egg whites that are made of made from albumin okay egg white is made from albumin yes. and even after having 10 egg whites in a day his albumin level was not rising okay so what does that mean the body is taking that albumin breaking it down into amino acids and maybe using it in some other body function maybe the albumin production was not at the body's priority okay see this is where our people are wrong they think that okay we have worked out we have uh, right now we came out of gym after a good session we have broken down our uh, muscles a lot so let's have some protein some post workout and it will easily replenish no it is not going to replenish your muscles when you yeah. take a protein when you take a piece of chicken when you eat some fish or chicken or eggs or protein supplement it will be assorted in terms of amino acids in, into your body it's like a library it will be restocked first yes all the amino acids will be restocked and then the body will analyze that what are my priority functions and which so amino acids that, i have to the use. body the body is going to uh, take about uh, the from your diet we are getting only the nine essential amino acids so whether the body is going to manufacture new amino acids from that the non essential amino acids or the body is going to direct it towards some other cell repair uh usually our structural proteins like the ones in our tendons and muscle not muscles but more of our bones and tendons are going to degrade and uh, get degraded the last yeah. but let's say like the patient you were talking about we don't know what the condition of his brain is maybe that requires the most protein at that yeah, point of exactly. time exactly exactly so production of albumin may not be a priority for the body exactly so so exactly this is my point so when the priority for the body is not having albumin you can put as much as albumin in your body it will not raise your albumin uh, levels you know instantly that's not how the body works mm. but the, gym, the, the the these gym guys they try to explain it in a such a simple way ke bhai like whatever you put in will have an instant effect on the things that you put in you will eat protein you will get muscle you will eat fat you will get a tummy so they, they try to you know uh, make it sound so simple the body is not like yeah. that and it's it's not their fault they are not an expert in that they uh, you know just a handful of gym trainers are actually certified trainers in india okay mm -hmm. so the rest are on the basis of that if i can eat 10 eggs in a day you should also eat 10 eggs in a day 
No, but even uh, even if we look at the certifying agencies, let's take NASCM, which is one of the more popular degrees that are out there. You can go to the NASCM website and check for yourself that that's not an accredited course. So it doesn't no. matter whether you're in India or Europe or uh, North America. Right. So any of these uh, courses are done from a very limited point of view, uh, very little understanding of the human body. And it's good for sports nutrition and uh, what, they will be dealing with but it is not always good when you are dealing with individuals because every body is different you can give a little bit generic advice that yes everybody needs to eat protein from the diet because right. that is something our body does not manufacture that's a generic advice applies to every single individual in the world right. but uh, things like when are you going to take the protein workout etc it depends on the individual so if it's a good uh, sports nutritionist or gym trainer they will not be giving these generic advices uh, to everybody without knowing what the condition of the person is yeah so all, all this facade all this all this um, calorie in and calorie out see, these things do not work like uh, you know people suppose they they don't want to get too deep into it the problem yeah. they just they just so want even to let's it. say let's say the calorie equation is accurate for weight loss now let us assume this we know that uh, for example let's take uh, uh, cricket or football like in uh, football you are trying to score a penalty or a free kick the player there is not sitting and calculating the projectile motion the angular velocity of the ball and the gravitational force that is going to cause the goal now cristiano ronaldo lionel messi david beckham they were very well known for bending the ball so the ball yep. used to go over a wall of people who are almost 6 feet and used to come down dip and uh, score the goal yep. now obviously there is a, a angular velocity and a gravitational force involved and maybe that is the reason why they are doing it but does it matter for cristiano ronaldo or messi no for them scoring the goal matters score yep. focusing on the objective matters so right. here when somebody is trying to lose weight what are you going to do knowing so much about calories than getting your body to a stage where the body doesn't want to eat food all the time right. unless in very few cases about a uh, very few cases who will have the obesity gene ob gene or leptin deficiency those are very few cases right. majority people who are uh, overeating have a metabolic disorder uh, firstly most people think that uh, people who are obese um have a very uh, slow metabolism it's it's actually the opposite they have a very high metabolism yeah and uh, secondly most of the people are eating too much and are insulin resistant and our bodies are designed in a way to eat too much because most of us who are alive today are descendants of people who over eat right. during famines so that's a sort of a paradox we have here that the body is designed to store fat because it doesn't know whether we'll go extinct or not whether tomorrow yeah. there will be no food or not tomorrow but at the same time we are suffering from these uh, diseases from the fat right you know uh, people who are too calorie conscious i just want to say them one thing i could not lose my weight on a 1200 calorie restricted diet okay i i could not but instead i tried and i failed now this thing is about a year and a half ago okay i tried and i failed rather i lost weight when i stopped counting the calories and since i am a professional in this field so whenever i pick up something to eat the numbers automatically start coming into my mind because you know i am always yep. uh, in this field so at average i eat from 16 to 18 to 100 to 2000 calories and i lost weight on a 1600 to 2000 calorie per day diet okay but i could not lose weight on a 1200 calorie people who think that calorie in and calorie out is that easy how are you going to explain this so calorie restriction is a very very short term solution it right. may not have worked for you for, but i'm sure for some people it does work no, but it, you it, will not it actually, be able to sustain it it actually worked for me also but 
uh, when your goal sustenance is sustainability is everything yeah see but but it it does not work when your goal is of 15 to 18 kgs and you get stuck after 3 kgs yeah so what what does how does it help the but the longer you are stuck in that situation will seriously impair your bodily function absolutely the problem absolutely. is there. so uh, just of of you know fear the uh, the the problem that i dropped my calories i lost initially 4 3 or 4 or 5 kgs of weight but now if i eat i will again gain weight this fear that is that, at the that, and that is the problem with calorie restriction right. that it is such a short term and such a narrow approach that immediately you go out of it you are in trouble yeah and so, in my opinion if your mind is too stressed about it how will you do other works your life is not about what you are going to right. eat right people have families to run people have right. finances to run people have a number of activities voluntary activities social activities economic activities political activities how are you going to do all that and keep counting your calories exactly exactly so that, that is the thing the longer you are stuck in a low calorie intake situation the more harm you will keep on doing to your body the more you will squeeze the nutrition out of your body your body has a lot of reserve for amino acids and a lot of reserve of minerals you will deplete that and once that is depleted that's when your nails start getting brick uh, you know brittle you start having brittle, chappy yeah. chappy lips then you start having you know dry skin and your hair start falling out see this is all these are all the problems so majority of the cases i have seen they start a calorie restricted diet they lower down their calories and after they very happily say that we have lost 5 6 or x number of kgs but now i have very thin hair and i've started to lose hair what could be the what can i do for that <laughs> the question is that what can exactly. i do so for hair loss is one of the symptoms of uh, protein deficiency yeah, obviously protein deficiency and your then body you have the testosterone dha thing yeah your body DHT, is sorry. in a malnourished DHT. state that is why you you are losing your hair because see the biotin that is in your body the keratin that your body makes these proteins will be used for a more prior function yep okay so taking a biotin capsule every day will not help you regain the hair strength that you used to have yeah so this is the this is the main reason See, this is where people you know don't wrap their minds around that uh, your your body your body is you know it it, it it has so many functions to do on a daily basis exactly and then there is something called the body heat which also needs to be maintained yeah um, uh, and a lot of energy goes in that a lot a lot so a lot. focusing on nutrition should always be a priority than focusing on calories if you focus on nutrition right. you will get the results remember right. healthy weight is all, a healthy body has healthy weight right everybody has a, a different uh, threshold fat limit and a different healthy body weight what right. is true for me may not be true for kanwal the vanit may not be true for right. some of the viewers watching here and uh, for example asians in the far east way very less and they are absolutely healthy europeans northern europeans are quite heavy but they are healthy so the only thing that determines your health are your biomarkers not the skin you cannot go by bmi and things like that and uh, decide that whether i am healthy or not you will be shocked to know most of the basketball players who have very little body fat 6% 7% 8% the as per bmi they are obese right exactly this, this the bmi thing does not go for people who work out plain and yeah even even for even not for the only, normal not public also out, you have is... to you have to keep a very open window that which which person does not come under the bmi now for example sometimes that uh, so many people since they are obsessed with this weight and height ratio the table that uh, that is available on the google also the weight to height ratio so people you know ask me i i i weigh this much and this is my height do you think it is okay uh, because i think my weight should be low 
because of the table i said don't worry about the table are you having any joint pain are you having any ankle problem if you are not having any ankle problems if your sleep is good if you are uh, you know maintaining uh, a good intake and outtake just relax and you know enjoy the moment enjoy your health rather than worrying yeah. about that according to the table i am 5 kg overweight i cannot hear you hello yeah now it's now it's back yeah. on so i i was saying about that uh, the the weight to the height ratio table that is also a lo- uh, creating a lot of confusion in the people who are aware of that yeah so they also like they want that uh, people want to fit themselves in a in a idle situation that we have to be in that category that's yes. not necessary for everyone so that is driven mostly by the uh, fitness industry right, lobbying right. and propaganda with all the marketing messages that right. you get that this is how you need to look but uh, the problem is we have never focused on adiposity like how much fat the body accumulates right. yeah. and many people may be in a healthy body weight but they are not healthy you must have come across plenty of people like that right uh in fact that is what explains why uh, both in the far east and india pe- um, ab- about majority of the pe- new cases of type 2 diabetes that you are getting are people who are at a normal healthy body weight or underweight so weight is not going to determine your health you have to focus on your biomarkers right you have to focus on how you feel and what your body is telling you right exactly so uh, in terms of uh, the adiposity the amount of fat that our body is comfortable with okay yep. now that that is something also people do not understand when they are on a weight loss program hmm that fat is essential for you and you are trying to you are running on a treadmill for 30 hours to just lose that weight your body is holding to that fat you are trying to lose it but your body is trying to hold on it that's a conflict in between your body and, and it will create yeah. a lot of stress yeah. okay so now coming to the point that uh, the diabetes how the number of diabetes it's shifting from the only from the diabetes is only for obese obese people now that is shifting to normal people now we have also seen you must have also seen many people who just have a belly they have very thin arms and they have very you know narrow shoulders exactly. and narrow shoulders and everything like they have just some amount of fat stored in their visceral region exactly now that visceral region fat is actually you know creating a pressure on your internal organ on your pancreas on your liver and that is a sign of insulin resistance to be yeah. frank exactly so this is this is that uh, this is an indicator that you are having a problem you are having yeah you, and you need not be uh, even pre diabetic to be insulin resistant as most diabetes researchers agree that you don't have to be pre diabetic to be insulin resistant and if you are insulin resistant your adiposity will be willing up, like you will start accumulating more and right. more fat right now sometimes uh, sometimes when i look at a patient i say like uh, i suspect that you have a fatty liver okay yeah. then when i when i go through their file their liver liver function test is absolutely oh. not hmm. what does that mean that means that they have a lot of visceral fat exactly there is a lot of problems in their body but it has yet to show its effect on the liver yeah but that does not mean that just going through a one simple blood test and if everything comes out good then you are you are just satisfied and you are tension free about it and you can do anything with your life that is not how things work blood testing and biochemical testing it's just one way of analyzing that is your- one level at least but that yeah. that level you should keep an eye on but that's not yeah. the only level but that's not the only level so when i ask people that i think maybe maybe you should control your intake because you know you have high adiposity you have high visceral fat and uh, you look 
look like you have a fatty liver also and you might be insulin resistant because i can see some signs on your skin your skin is getting dark yeah. on your arms or on your neck and you know what reply they gave is i check my fasting sugar levels a couple of times they are below 100 so i don't think i am a diabetic in any way and they continue with eating sugar see that's the problem glucose metabolism is and even insulin resistance you will not uh, get reliable data for everybody across populations i don't know if you had taken a look at a recent paper published in the british medical journal about uh, omega 3 fatty acids and diabetes where they concluded that omega 3 supplements cannot should not be recommended for type 2 diabetes my thing is omega 3 supplements help you fight metabolic syndrome so when you have an essential fat which your body cannot manufacture exactly. why would you jump to the conclusion that this is not going to help you uh, fight type 2 diabetes by looking at your uh, fasting sugar level and glucose metabolism right. level right. so right. Uh, these are like uh, this the science is still evolving a lot right and what we do realize that a single narrow minded approach is not going to work in the future because it has not worked in the past 30 years so uh, i read a article about a couple of days ago that say that giving vitamin d supplements or sitting in the sun to get vitamin d might not help you with your type 2 diabetes okay uh, when i when i read the headline i was like this is such a demotivating type of a article to write in the first place hmm okay it doesn't matter if you are diabetic or not okay you need to at least either sit in the sun or get a vitamin d supplement so when you say that there is no benefit of giving vitamin d supplements in terms of diabetes okay just leave the diabetes for a for a while why sitting exactly. in the sun why why are you even you know saying to the people that you should not be sitting in the sun or it it's not going to help you in any way rather it rather the article should have been in this way that vitamin d has a lot of benefits but might not directly help in diabetes see that's what in one of our uh, courses they were saying that since the 80s the research funding has been going down so what has happened is now researchers are looking out to the industry for funding previously yeah. the industry used to give fund and say that hey can you find out what will be the effect so that we can design our selling strategy accordingly right. now what has happened is people are going to them hey do you have funds this is what i will provide you so there is always a cognitive bias now when you see something uh, like omega 3 an article come out against omega 3 tying it to type 2 diabetes and saying that it has no effect does it change the fact that omega 3 is proven to reduce your triglycerides no does it change the fact that omega 3 is proven to reduce inflammation no does it change the fact that omega 3 helps you fight metabolic syndrome in which type 2 diabetes is also yes, a part also a part oh, of, yeah. it helps you fight metabolic syndrome yeah. so why would you come up as a recommendation like that should people be taking omega 3 yes people have to take omega 3 because our body cannot manufacture it right right that is why it's called an essential fatty acid right so yeah i have many messed up things to be on <laughs> so we have uh, diverted quite a bit from our uh, initial topic let us just try to summarize some yeah. of the things that we uh, discussed today for our viewers would you like to go about that yes uh to the people who are viewing this uh, you know watching this video live or later if you are thinking that calorie in and calorie out that is the equation that will help you gain weight maintain weight or lose weight the longer you stay in that period the more harm you are going to do to your body okay so this is my first comment and second is that it is it will actually show some positive effects in the starting but in a long term if calorie deficit and calorie restriction was that good of a strategy then why have we not you know achieved a 95% more than 95% of success yep so this is what i have to say don't worry about the calories go for the health 
to when whenever whenever you start your weight loss program what i do is and what i suggest people to do is for the initial phase stop worrying about your weight at all and just start building a positive health exactly in that weight process, is a symptom always remember this thing weight is a symptom of poor health symptom nothing of, else yeah so maybe in the process in the initial stages you might gain a kg or two also exactly but that all gaining is beneficial for your body the later on you will what what you will lose is that is the extra fat that your body is holding maybe what you gained is a little bit of water weight if you are dehydrated or a little bit of muscle weight that your body yep. was let so just stop counting the calories don't be a calorie please okay you need to have basic information about calories but it is not that simple so like i would say if anybody has any doubts about calories or something like that they can dm me any time or they can you know uh, contact you or contact me any one of us we are always always happy to help yeah and you can follow our pages follow erudite nutrition follow rebel health and fitness yep. solutions we post good information from time to time uh and just to summarize uh, the strategies of eating outside always remember when you are eating outside the idea is to re- reduce the damage so the first step you are going to do is to eat a little bit before you leave home secondly you are going to avoid processed foods uh for example prioritize rice or potatoes over any processed food that you see and the third thing is try to focus a little bit more on the meats the fish is the less rich and oily items right. that you have right. so using that strategy you can minimize and those who are going to office parties usually there is a lot of alcohol involved alcohol is not ideal for you but combining alcohol with fried foods is the right. worst thing that you can do to your right. body so that is something please do try to avoid so this would be our summary for today uh next time we will try to get you a little bit more information on uh, lipids because it is a topic of interest both for right. uh, kanwaldeep and myself so till then next till the next time i thank all our viewers for joining us and who will be watching the videos in the future please do share this among your friends and anybody who you think has been stressed out trying to count calories they can definitely benefit from this advice So thank you thank you everyone thank you pratik for uh, this excellent session it's always enjoyable you know talking with you yeah so All thank right. you everyone you, you guys can to... follow our pages okay and uh, if you have any doubt you can text me or you can text uh, pratik for that we are always happy to help and uh, i hope maybe the, the the next excellent topic that just came into my mind after you talked about lipids is uh, we should talk elaborately about cholesterol yes probably cholesterol can be the le- next topic of discussion yeah. cholesterol and coronary heart diseases that can yeah. be the topic of next discussion so we'll certainly right. you know uh, do some study on that and we'll come to some good grounds and uh, we'll surely have a session very soon okay yeah. all right guys so have a good sunday and see you soon Bye-bye. all right everybody take care take care see you guys bye